Hi, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to create this simple infographic in PowerPoint. So I've just opened a blank presentation and this is what happens to the screen. So all I'm going to do is just to get rid of these two boxes. So if I just click at the edge here and press delete, click at the edge and press delete. Then go to insert, go to shapes, click on the drop down and just select your circle, and basic shapes. Now I'm going to click and drag out a circle. Now if I just click and drag, you see the circle becomes an oval. If I hit the shift key, you can see I will always have a perfect circle. There we go. Now for every shape that's inserted into PowerPoint, they will have a borderline and a fill color. Let's choose yellow and just click away. And you can see there's a very faint line around the outside. Now you can choose to keep that or you can choose to get rid of it. If you want to get rid of it, click on your shape, go up to shape outline, click on the drop down and select no outline. And as you can see, that borderline has disappeared. For this presentation, I'm just going to keep it just to keep things easier. Then we don't have to go, keep going through the process of getting rid of it. So I'm just going to select my circle. If you go to shape format, you'll have all of your different customization menus along here, which will determine the color of the inside of your shape and also the outline as well. Now, if we go all the way over to the end here to format pane and click on that, we have a further dialog box over here, and this will give you more options to customize your shapes. So here under the bucket icon, you've got fill, which again is your fill color. Here's your colors and also your transparency if you want that color to be a little more faded. And then down here, we've got line. And here, not only can we adjust the color of the line, but also you can change the width. So for example, let's go up to 10, press enter. You can see now that borderline is much thicker. And also you've got some styles here. You can change them if you want to, to make that borderline look as if it might be drawn. And then you can change the line as well if you want that to be a double line. Let's just make that 10 again. And now you can see how that design looks. So let's just go back to one. So for the central color, I'm gonna go over and choose a very light gray. And then for the outside, I'm just going to choose black. And then I'm going to copy and paste this circle. So I'm going to hold down my Alt or Option key on my keyboard. And then I'm just going to click and drag out another circle. And then what I'm going to do with this circle is just going to take out this central color because I'm going to use the black outline as a guide. So select it, go over to your fill, go to no fill. And then I'm just going to, I'm going to make this bigger, holding down my shift key because I want to maintain that circular ratio. And I'm just going to move that over the top of this circle here. You can see as I move it, you have these guides that will click into place as soon as it's centralized over the top of the other circle. And all this is going to do is to give me a guide as to where to put the circles around the outside of this infographic. So once I've done that, I'm going to select the inner circle again, and once again, I'm going to copy and paste it. But this time, I'm going to reduce the size of it, again holding down my shift key, to the size that I want the little circles or bubbles around the outside. So I'm just going to reduce that down a little bit. Now if you want these circles to be a little bit bigger, but when you go to put it on this line here, it's too close. You just extend this circle around the outside. So just make this a little bigger. And again, move that so it's centralized. Now, if you find those guides don't appear, you can select both of these circles, holding down your command or control key, click on both of them, go to shape format, Go to align and go to align to center and then align and then align to middle and then they'll be perfectly lined up. If you don't want to move or to be nudged, you can group them together by going to group, select group and then you can move them around as one. 
The thing with this is you can ungroup it at the end or if you need to make changes, that's absolutely fine. But we will need to get rid of this outer circle, so we'll do that at the end. I'm just going to make this circle a little bit smaller. Once we've defined how big this circle is, we're just going to copy and paste the rest. So that's about the size of the circle that I want. So now I'm just going to hold my Alt or Option key down and click and drag out another circle, one for the top, one for the bottom, one for here, here, and finally here. Now once we've got all the circles in place, we can start to align them, change the colors, and insert some text and icons. So the way I generally choose to line these up is as follows. So you can see I've got this square here that's lined up with the outer circle and this one is as well. So for this one here, I've managed to line them up. So now I'm going to line up this circle, this circle, and my central circles. So again, holding back down my command or control key, I'm going to select all of those three. Then I'm going to go to align and then align to middle. So those now are all perfectly lined up to the center there. I'm going to do that to the top when you can see my squares aren't quite lined up. So I'm just going to move those up with my arrow key. I think it will need to go over to the left a bit, but it, I will align it anyway. Do that this, at the same with the bottom. Line those squares up. And again, holding down my command or control key, I'm going to select all those three. So we're lining up with this central circle as well. Go to align and then align to center. And now all of those three are lined up as well. And now for these outer ones here, this is going to take a little bit of eyeballing. So try to make this space here the same distance as this space here. Once you're happy with that, if you select these two, then go to align and then align to middle, which means they're perfectly lined up that way. What we're also trying to do is to ensure the circles are cut through the center. So if you don't feel that that circle is quite cut through the center, then you can move it. But also if you look at the distance of these circles to the inner circle, try to make that the same as well. So here, I think we need to go down one and across one, make that gap the center and the same here. I think we need to go down across, just using my arrow keys. And again, we can align those again, align to middle. There we go, and we can do the same here. I think that distance needs to go a little bit forward towards the circle. I think those distances are about the same here. And again, and again, I'm just going to line these two circles up here, align, align to middle. And then I'm going to do it for this one and this one, and then align align to center and then align these two align to center so all of those circles now you can just do an eyeball check of the distances between them all but they all should now be perfectly lined up and then we're going to keep the guide on until the end just in case we accidentally nudge things and now what we can do is go ahead and place the text and change the color so let's change the color first. I'm going to go to this circle here, go to Shape Format, or go along to Format Pane, and go along to Solid Fill, go over to Color, and then all I'm going to do is start moving through the colors. Now I can keep these black outlines if I want to, or get rid of them as I showed you before, but I'm just going to keep them for this demonstration. Then I'm going to insert some text, so go to Insert, Text Box, and then just simply click and drag out a text box, and then insert your title. So if I click off that box and click back on, just click on the edge so your cursor's not showing. I can go up to the Home tab, and then I can go along to all my font section here. I can change my font, 
but I can also use this increase font size tool. And if I just click on that, you can see it'll increase and the icon next to it will just decrease the size of that font, make life a little easier. And then I can go to center text here and just center that title. Then again, insert another text box, insert text box, click and drag out another text box. And then I'm just going to paste in some text. And once again, I'm just going to click on the edge of the box so the cursor is not in the box. Go to the Home tab. It's going to reduce the size of that text. I'm going to center it. And then what I need to do is to make sure all of this text is centered inside this circle. So select the outer circle or the group that we made earlier. Hold down my Command or Control key. Select these two boxes. Go to Shape Format. Go to align, align to center. So you can select these text boxes and you can move them up and down with your arrow keys. I'm moving the cursor at the moment. But as long as you don't move them left or right, then they'll be perfectly centered. So now we need to insert some icons into the circles. You can put text in if you want to, but go up to insert, icons, and then there's lots and lots of icons to choose from. But if you're not quite sure what you need to select or you're very, you can always type something in. So if I put phone up there, you can see here that we've got lots of different phone options. You can select a mobile phone. In fact, let's select a dark one like this. Click insert. Now, here's my icon. Now I'm going to change all my icons to white. So select it, go to graphics format, Graphics Fill, click on the drop down and select white. And I can just resize it. And then some of these you can put in the center yourself by eyeballing it. Or again, you can select both the icon and the circle by holding down your command or control key. Go to Graphics Format, Align, Align to Center, Align, Align to Middle. Then you can click away and you can see whether you're happy with that alignment. If you are, then select them again, go to group and select group. And that's one icon now. You can go ahead and do the second one. I'm gonna take this out and I'm just gonna to begin to select from these options here. Again, move the icon change the color to white. Once it's selected, you can see white's in here already. You don't have to click on the drop down. just click graphics format and it will change that color for you. Just resize that. I'll just show you how to align this one more time. Align to center, align to middle. And now all I'm going to do is to group those together and then I'm going to speed up the video to do the remaining icons. Okay, so once they're all grouped and you're happy with it, let's ungroup this central circle and its outline guide. So select it, go to Shape Format, Group, Ungroup. Let's select this outer line. You can keep it if you want to, it's completely up to you, but select it, press Delete. Now to ensure everything's lined up on your page, we can now go around and select absolutely everything, all the groups and the center. And then we can go to group, group everything together. And then we can go to align, align to center, align, align to middle. And then we can just ungroup everything if we want to then apply some animations. So now we're gonna create an animation. So select the top one or the one that you want to appear first. Go to animations. I'm going to select fly in. And then I'm going to go to the animation pane here so that we can customize all of these different animations. I'm going to go to my second one, again, fly in and do that with the remainder of my icons. 
And then over here on the man animations, you can see they're all numbered in order. You can go up to this preview here and click preview and you can see how they will all appear in your presentation. Now you can customize them. If we just go down here, you can see we've got effects, timings and triggers. So you can customize the animation. If you go to effect options, you can decide if they come from the bottom, the left or the right, etc. So I'm going to have mine coming from the left. And then it says if you want them to be dimmed after they're inserted or whether you want a sound when they come into your presentation. And there's these options as well. I do like to use this bounce end here and I'll show you what that does now. We, let's go to preview and then they have a little bounce at the end when they come in. So then we go to timings and at the moment I click my mouse and all of my icons will appear. And at the moment they appear quite quickly after each other. So then I can slow that down. Let's go to one second. Let's go to preview. And you can see now that's slightly slower than it was before. And you can have that slow if you want to. If you go to this drop down, you can see that you can have that much slow if you want to. And obviously you can have a delay coming in as well and you can change the seconds of that delay. And then you've also got triggers. You can start the effect by as part of your sequence. So as soon as you click to the next slide, it will come on or you can just wait, click on the slide, and then as soon as you want the animation to appear, then you can just click on click, and then those animations will appear on click. So that is how to make a very simple infographic in PowerPoint. I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please like and subscribe, and have a great day.